Hello, everyone, and welcome to Thoughts on Dragon Ball Super, episode 71 to 75. So, with 71, we got something very, very what the frick. I mean, <laughs> if you listen to the last one that actually spanned for 10 episodes, that was the fact that the last three or the last two actually were like filler. And then now we have episode 71 with the bombshell of Goku's dead again. What the frick? Goku's dead again. So does that mean every time we see future trunks slash other world trunks, other reality trunks, does that mean that we have to always expect Goku to die? That's the horrible part of it. So anyways, Goku actually was, because we're taken back, I guess. And we have Goku who is trying to figure out who is trying to kill him and where the frick is he. And to the point, we actually have the part of where Goku actually is just eating one grain of rice at a time. Yeah, he's not eating very, very fast and very so much as he usually does. And, well, funny enough that Gohan and Goten actually trail him. Gohan is in his Super Saiyan. No, my gosh. He's she is in his great Saiyan uniform. And we have Goten, which I just watched Dragon Ball Z Kai, the final chapter. And I heard it from myself. Goten said that's a cool outfit. Now, after all these years, he gets to have his very own outfit. And he says it looks kind of lame. I'd rather just take the sunglasses. What? What? So they trail him. He doesn't really go well. And he can find who he was. Meanwhile, we actually have in other places, like for instance, Vegeta is training with Whis still. And Be Beerus is like, where the hell is Goku? Goku should be training. He's our lead warrior. He's our lead fighter. At any point, the tournament could start. We really need him in... It's like, yeah, we has no idea. It's like, well, maybe he's training, whatever. And Barris like, you train him himself. And, and Vegeta's right there listening to it. It's like, man, that's messed up. Man, that's messed up. We also have Hit, which that's what I was like. It's like, yeah, someone's after Goku. He tells Gohan and Goten after a delicious meal at Gohan's house. So he tells him that. And then I'm like, yeah, I think Hit the Hitman is going to do something. Or hit the assassin or hit the legendary assassin. Whichever name you want to choose. I think he's involved. And it's kind of funny that we go to the world where Hit is. And he has a he has to do a mission and he does it. But beforehand, we actually hear that Frost is at large. He is on the move. He is, a, he is running. He is on the run. So it's like, oh, frick. So it's either Hit or Frost who's after Goku. But of course, Frost, on the other hand... He's not going to do crap. Frost is not going to do crap. He's nothing. So, yeah, we have some good little touch back of the previous, way previous episodes. Then we have him hit getting the new assignment and it's Goku and he crushes the communicator or whatever with his hand and he smiles. But I'm like, hmm. So does that mean, I mean, I figure Hit wouldn't be the one who does it because it's like, it's because of him, he's able to do his job even better than he could do so many times before because he was able to do like 0.1 seconds or 0 0.01 seconds. And now he's able to do 0.1, right? He's able to do one actual second of, yeah. So I'm kind of puzzled on how does this work? So, yeah, we get to have the confirmation that it was Hit who would do it, and Hit did deliver it, and he has a brand new ability, apparently. I guess that's what he learned, is a brand new ability as well. So, yeah, he was able to land a punch and killed Goku. I guess the real question is, who hired him? That's the good question. Who hired him? On to episode 72. I forgot to mention one thing, though, before I go to 72. I forgot to mention that he died at the same place where Goku and Vegeta, where he fought Vegeta for the very first time. Yeah, that's one thing I should definitely have noted. So episode 72, what's going on with that? Oh, it's very simple. 
Apparently, Goku was able to revive himself by shooting a final blast that we thought it was just random. But no, he was able to jumpstart his heart, and there you go. And now he's going to challenge Hit again. This time, there's going to be an all-out battle, unlike the previous time where Hit can't go all out. Now Hit can go all out. Of course, he had to plead with Gohan and Goten and Piccolo, let me do this. I want to put my life on the line so I could actually go against them. And that's what happens. And amazingly enough, wow, man, wow. It's, it's just, yeah, so Goku's trying to figure out what he's doing, which he's shooting invisible blasts. That's how he's able to do things. So his punches are just invisible blasts that he's doing. It's not like a super fast punch or a shockwave punch that actually takes people out. No, no, no. He actually shoots an invisible blast that hurts the person and he di- they die. And he admits it's only one hit he needs, one strike. But he took, yeah, he first time Goku got hit, then the second time Goku, it took him the third time, but yet third time he dodged and it just grazed him. So it's, it turns out that his time jump ability is actually a time skip, and now he knows how to even manipulate it even more so that it looks like there's two of them like mind shuffle, but it's like, it's two of them. And well, Vados and Champa's there. And Vados explains the fact of that you can make a parallel universe or a parallel world. And that's why Goku can't hit him so many times is because he's able to go to the parallel world where he stored the skip time. So yeah, my gosh. And I think maybe it's Champa who called the hit. Wow. Of course, on the other hand, you do have Vegeta and he's training with Whis and he finally actually decides to bribe Whis into getting him to do whatever Goku is doing. And funny enough, he had to bribe Whis with not only steak, but steak with grandma's secret sauce. I have no idea what the frick that is, but I bet someone in Japan could tell me what that means. Anyways. Okay, well, I have to retract. Vados actually hired him by proxy, but there's a real client who hired him. So we still don't know who hired Hit, crazy enough. And the battle is kind of cool. So, yeah, the fight was pretty good. And wow, yeah, we fi- yeah, it was very interesting how Goku was able to trump what Hit was doing. That was so... Amazing. It turns out that Goku hired Hit himself, but he basically did it through a middleman through a middleman. So Goku want, had Whis to help, and Whis contacted Vados, and Vados contacted Hit. So that's what happened. And you do think they're going to call the whole thing off? No, no, no. It turns out Goku's going to still allow Hit to actually have his assassination planned. Yeah, so Vegeta figured it out. <laughs> and, well, everyone knows except for Gohan, Goten, Piccolo, and Chi-Chi. But Chi-Chi kind of suspects Frost did it. <laughs> and Goku told him, please, please, Vegeta, don't tell Chi-Chi I did this. Don't tell anyone. And, of course, well, we, yeah, Vegeta kind of forgot the fact of he said he promised steak with Gran- Granny's secret sauce, which he made the whole thing up. Holy frick. So now he has to create something with some sauce in it, and that's what he's going to call. That's interesting. That's going to be kind of crazy. Anyways, we're going to get on to episode 73. So, episode 73 deals with, well, first, Jacko being a somewhat idiot. I mean,. Yeah, he was hungry and crap, but he left the perp in the freaking spaceship and he was able to break out and now he's flying free. Sadly, I can so predict that he most likely comes to Earth and in Great Saiyan Man, because he's getting the movie, most likely Gohan has to go out there and beat the crap out of this stupid alien whatever, jellyfish or starfish or whatever. So, yeah, there's a movie for Great Saiyan Man to be in. And Hercule is in it, too. A.K.A. Mr. Satan. And, well, it's a versus one. Yeah, Japan loved to do versus matches. They really love to do verse matches movies. So, yeah, he hired a pop star, was hired, Barry. And then another pop star was hired as his love interest. 
And wow, it's messed up to hear a freaking reporter. It's like, why well, pick this minor role of a guy who hit headlines sometimes and then disappeared? This uncool hero. And I'm like, damn, 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 that's messed up. Well, at least Barry is kind of cool and he protects, say, a man in a way. So, yeah, and Coco is the girl. Anyways, yeah. Hercule was about to tell Coco, a.k.a. the um, love interest actress, that Gohan is a great sale, man, but Videl stopped him and said, no, no, keep that secret. We're, we want him to be normal. We want him to not lose his job. So, yeah, he kept that at least. And Barry, wow, he was so bold to actually go to Videl and, yeah, he was trying to romance her and said, you want my autograph? And she just pulled away and, man, yeah. Wow. I I was shocked that she didn't go to her old Videl ways, you know, the fact of stepping on his foot or twisting his whatever his whatever. Oh, my gosh. I mean, twisting his arm or wrist, you know, anyways, going to continue on. So crazy enough, you have Barry being a jerk bag. Apparently, I'm not sure. Maybe he's just being a jerk for being a jerk because he wanted to do his own stunts, but he couldn't do it. So he's going to give the freaking stunt person a hard time. Then Gohan's like, I'm going to tie him on in because the freaking stunt man could actually get screwed over. Because instead of dodging out of the way of the tank, he wants Barry wanted the stunt man to jump on the tank. So Gohan decided to take that and he sure did. And wow, he did an awesome job. Barry's like, what the frick with the last finishing move? That's some bull crap. I didn't write that. And then the freaking stunt coordinator said, you got a problem with that, man? You got a problem with him, punk? And yeah, apparently he had to go use the restroom because he got intimidated. And Videl is like, okay, no one can see you behind the mask. You really should continue on doing it because, well, the stunt coordinator said, I want you as a stunt man. And Hercule was like, yeah. I would like nothing to go wrong. And with you here, nothing will go wrong. And Videl actually also mentioned the fact of seeing him in that suit made her heart pound like the, back in the day, which is like, wow. Wow, man. <laughs> I'm not going to get some X-rated content on that. But yeah, go on said that things got truly stretched to a point of where it shouldn't have. So episode 73 to the fast route is that Coco actually overheard what happens and great Saiyaman got to have his groove back. He was able to stop a robbery with people that he actually went against in the Boo saga. Wow. They were in jail from that episode they were featured in until now. And like I said, the alien actually infected one of them. And well, at first Krillin was in there and Krillin was taken on the two. But thank goodness the great Saiyan man came in there because, well, as soon as the alien took hold of one of them, it was a major, oh, sh thank goodness Krillin wasn't in there or Krillin would most likely be in intensive care. Sadly, Krillin definitely just threw out Gohan's name to everyone so they know who this is, but it's like, frick, man. Boma actually made sure that Gohan wasn't revealed because she was like, oh, my suit, I made an extra suit for this and it got stolen. Someone stole it. Thank goodness they're using it for good and not evil. So he was safe. And ah, oh, no wonder I'm getting thumbs down because it's supposed to be Dr. Boma. I didn't know she got her doctorate. Screw you, thumb downers. I didn't know. I didn't know Boma fans that she's a doctor. I didn't know. Okay, geez. But yeah, so it turns out while they were on the rooftop talking, which I'm like, well, she is a doctor. Shouldn't she make sure that the coast was clear? But anyways, yeah, so Coco overheard and Coco said, hey, I would like to, yeah, go around the place. Of course, after some filming and stuff. And well, Jacko shows up and he's like, well, great say, oh, man, I don't know who you are, but I think the alien has affected you and I'm going to shoot you with this beam. It's like, what the f Jacko, what the frick, man? So that's where episode 73 and new ending, new ending theme for the ending. So, yeah, new song for the ending. And I haven't heard it all the way through. I should, but I think it's better than doop bop bop boop doop bop. Yeah, so they finally got rid of that one and now they have this one. 
yeah, many people said this is the definitive ending that should be Dragon Ball Super, but I know for a fact they're going to change it again very soon. But for right now, we can just enjoy it. So I'm going to 74. So, yeah, he shot the beam, and holy frick, the beam is very, very powerful. And finally, after getting a little bit choked by Kogo, who's like, protect me, because they were able to make it onto the spaceship, he was able to reveal that he's Gohan, and it's kind of funny, it's like, <laughs> you have <laughs> Jack, who's like, this super lame getup, and heck, Coco agrees that it's a lame getup. Personally, I would wonder why isn't Boma like freaking out saying it's not lame or anything. Yeah, where is her backlash on people saying how crappy it is? But anyways, the alien is called a Watagash and well, it latches on and it latches to the darkness of the people's hearts. And yeah, that's how it's dangerous. But on its own, it's just a parasite. It could easily be captured, but yet it was able to break out. That was weird. Did I mention it gave superpowers? Of course, I talked about it because in the last episode, you already last part of it, I told you that Krillin most likely would have got beaten the freak up. So yeah, superhuman power, depending on how dark the heart is, the more power the person can get and wield. Holy frick. I knew the whole situation was fricked up personally. I mean, looking at it, it's like, yeah, Gohan, you shouldn't be with a girl alone and all that stuff. But yeah, it turns out he's getting set up by none other than Barry. Barry actually told a tabloid report or whatever. Yeah, the tabloid network or whatever that freaking Coco has a secret lover and he's going to. Barry right here is trying to screw over Gohan's family and make them crumble because, well, you know, she's going to think that Gohan was having a romance with her, which, yeah, yeah, right. Anyways, man, man, Barry is crap. And I thought Coco was okay. I thought Coco was like the victim here. And instead of Coco actually being cool and all, actually being like, I'll tell you what happens, or she basically just say, F the guy, I'm not going to allow Gohan to be exposed like this. No, no, no. She actually made sure that they got at least a few pictures of him in the house, in the, her room, and then they go on the rooftop and freaking Coco just kiss freaking Gohan. So she's not even... A freaking witness of circumstance or a victim witness of circumstance well anyway she's not a victim she actually played in freaking Barry's hands as well so damn and like I thought the whole idea of him flying out was a bad idea too because now you have Barry as well taking photos and now he's like yes I have blackmailing photos too my goodness. Man, he's such a jerk. And they have to retract it again. It turns out that Coco was trying to actually be cool and do the right thing because the tabloid guy, the photographer, actually was just aimed at her room. Barry was the only guy who actually was up there on the rooftops as well, just in case she decides to not do what Barry wants her to do. So Barry has the photo of them kissing and has photos of him flying too. So damn, she tried her hardest to actually be a good guy. So she is a good guy, but Frick Barry is just too clever on this. Damn. So instead of just sending it straight to whatever, he actually went to their house just after minutes ago as he arrives and then freaking expose all the photos he took of him flying him talking with Coco. And then he just threw the bombshell photo of him kiss getting kissed by Coco. And now we have freaking Videl here. Very, very sad. Awesome. She got pissed off by what freaking Barry did. And he, she ripped the freaking pages. She ripped the freaking page, the, pictures which i why does he have extra film i'm sorry trying to be a bad guy here but i'm just saying why the frick don't you have extra film dumb bastard and he's like 
Yeah, as Greg Sayo man, and then he called him a stunt man after you just revealed he's the great Sayo man. Um, idiot! Why the freak is it a good idea to insult him in his own house? You idiot! I was kind of hoping that Videl would just punch him in the face. I'm like, come on, Videl, come on, Videl, please, please go back to your old ways just once, just once, Videl, go back to your old, old place where you were able to take on people bigger than yourself. I would have liked at least one punch from Videl, like one punch to the guy because she is capable. It would have been awesome if she would have done it, but no. Gohan gave him an energy burst of wind and, well, there he left. Now, I should have saw this coming, but I didn't. The parasite finds Barry and he has darkness in his heart right now. So, oh, holy frick, it's going to be a good showdown that happens. Holy frick, Barry has gone to an actual super evil, super arch villain little thing if you guys remember spider-man the original spider-man movie you know what happened when green goblin revealed he now knows who spider-man really is and he went to freaking aunt may and went to mary jane exactly what happened here he's not even far from the house and he just breaks in knocks out gohan i he didn't knock out videl videl was able to call hercule and Pan was taken. He just kidnapped a baby. And now, yeah, at least Pan is okay with it. Pan is just giggling and everything like usual. Holy frick. And he wrote on the wall, Say a man, meet me at the TV station. Holy frick. Holy frick. So Pan pooped her pants, <laughs> pooped the freaking diaper. And well, great. Say a man slash Gohan is there and Barry charges up and turns even more into an evil monster. My goodness. Are we watching ultimate Spider-Man or what? I forgot. Videl knows how to fly now. Yeah. So Videl went up there, grabbed pan and whoa, that was kind of not good for her to do. I kind of wish she actually decided to go as Ms. Say a man or whatever the female equivalent is so she can hide her identity as well. I mean, frick. <laughs> but anyways, yes, the big showdown of the big bunky face gorilla over here, Barry versus great say a man. But at least Pan is OK now. She's safe. Barry evolved again. He transformed into now a big giant monster. Now you have this whole hero versus a giant monster deal. I kind of saw that in the live stream that was going on, but I didn't want to actually get spoiled until right now, which holy frick, man, things got real. So you have Jacko showing up finally a time after Gracie Hill Man slash Gohan's getting a little bit beaten up and oh yeah, the monster have some heat beam eyes. Holy frick. So, yeah, you have Jacko about to shoot and fire, but Gohan's like, no, no, no. Pan is right there. She can see everything, and she doesn't need to see a guy gets disintegrated. So, yeah, Jacko backed off, but he said, I'm not going to help you fight this monster, though. You're on your own, though. You're on your own. So, yeah, Coco first doing it, and now you have Videl and... Pan, well, Pan's not really doing it, but still, Frick. They're all just revealing his identity that freaking loud. Oh, my gosh. Oh, my gosh. But, yeah, he's just got heat beam died all the way up there to the atmosphere, and he's floating up there. My goodness. And plus, you have Videl actually explaining to Coco why she's not breaking down like she is. So, Gohan was a transformed. I think he... Yeah, we didn't see in that one. So he charged up. He didn't turn Super Saiyan. And he just did a Kamehameha. And, of course, Great Saiyan Man finally has another transformation called Super Saiyan Man. Super Great Saiyan Man. So good for him. Good for him. And he has a new attack called Super Great Saiyan Man Beam. And weirdly enough, I think this wasn't in the first in Boo Saga, but he also has Great Saiyan Man Beam. 
but I didn't see that in the Budokai games. Maybe it's in the other games, but still, though. And sadly, he came down and took off his helmet, and oh, freaking damn, man. This is a horrible thing to do right now, man. It's really horrible. But technically, by now, everyone should actually know who he is. So it ends with Jacko holding Barry naked as frick, and he captured the alien again. And then we get the cutscene to the movie being shown, and luckily Coco is like, okay, so here's the deal. You don't tell Gohan's secret, and we won't, I won't tell everyone that you were the freaking monster that Gohan was fighting. <laughs> that was a good one, that was a good one. And everyone got to see it, Gohan, Videl, Chi-Chi, and Goku, along with Pan and Goten, they all got to see it. So that was cool. That was pretty cool. Sadly, Gohan was, I mean, Goku was asleep during the movie and then Chi Chi decided to hit him in the back of the head when he re revealed that he kind of was sleeping during the movie. He was training anyways. So yeah, when we back to where we started with freaking Jacko getting some food, it's like, Jacko, just go, 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 go deliver this freaking prisoner first, then get food. But instead, no, he's going to get some food right now. He did not learn, and it's been, it's hinted that it's been released again, so, oh, freaking damn, are we gonna do the whole thing all over again? But most likely, he, it wouldn't go to Earth again, it will go to another planet, so here we go again. Oh, man, oh my gosh, now we're on to the last episode, right, of this video, episode 75. So in episode 75, we have something revealed. Number one is Chi Chi allows him to do training and two birds, one stone. So he's able to do Kamehameha's, but the Kamehameha's will have to plow the field. So yeah, there you go. And well, he needs a sparring partner. Vegeta says, mm, I have no idea what he said. And we says he's, he's kind of busy. Yeah, he's really busy. And then we have. All the others are declined on that one. So instead, we have Gohan. And it's kind of sad. I really would love to see how Gohan's Supreme Kai teaching, in quotations, goes toe-to-toe -to -toe with Goku's Super Saiyan God form, or a.k.a. Blue Super Saiyan. But we will never get to see that, sadly. So we get to have this nice little mock battle between Great Saiyan Man and Goku, which Goku is confused on whether or not it is Gohan or not. So, yeah, first things first, and Goku wanted to test Great Saiyan Man. They both went Super Saiyan. Gohan now revealed his identity, whatever. And I forgot to mention that Goten said about the suit is the suit was cool in the movie, but dressing like that all the time is lame, apparently. Wow. It was a good scene. It was a good match scene that happened. But sadly, it gets stopped because Chi-Chi's like, look what you did to the field. The, you plowed it so good, and now it's kind of destroyed. And he's like, go somewhere else. And she's Chi-Chi's being Chi-Chi, you know? Yeah, you know how that goes. What a strange turn of events. Goku goes to Krillin. Krillin's having a shootout with some freaking burglars. Krillin got shot, taking a bullet for a cop. And then as soon as Goku subdues the freaking burglars because he crushed the guns, they go back to his house. They have a conversation about, will you spar with me? Krillin's like, but it's not going to be that satisfying to you as it is with someone else. But Goku wants to spar with him. And then all of a sudden, Android 18 comes in there and she's like, you got shot. What? And she was like, I married a man who is not a mere weakling. And it's like, whoa. It was unbelievable. And then the freaking daughter got into it too, asking, is daddy weak? And then all of a sudden she's like, I want a strong dad. And it just boiled to the point of where Krillin has to get back into it. Krillin has to start doing martial arts again. Krillin has to get a little bit better than what he was. Uh, I forgot the name, but the Namekian that was the leader of the Namekians before the new Namekian took hold. He bestowed upon Krillin unlocked potential, 
and I guess the unlock potential. Of course, these days it doesn't matter anymore. But man, it really kind of brings a messed up dagger to the point of where he has to get stronger because, well, Android 18 just said, holy frick. And it's kind of crazy that if we go a little bit back to a little bit more, it's kind of like, wait, but Android 18 just said she wanted to satisfy her man. And then all of a sudden she says this. I'm like, whoa. But on the other hand, I think what's going on here is just the fact of she was trying to nudge him into training again. I think that's really what it was. She wasn't really trying to say anything. She was just saying that so he actually would train with Goku. So he might even get a little bit stronger than he is right now because he's quite out of shape. So they go to Master Roshi's to get some teaching. Actually, Krillin wants to be retaught while Goku wants to kind of get retaught, I guess. So the first step in doing that, besides, well, Krillin actually gave him the usual present of i'll just say girly magazines it's not actually porno mag so yeah girly magazines and then well what happens is first things first krillin gets to fight but goku also has to wear something during the sparring which is he has to wear some sandals he has to wear a turtle suit and well it did a decent job for krillin yeah it does help krillin a bit and then after that nighttime, Krillin actually trains a little bit more and Master Roshi says, um, you lack focus or your spirit, your control is just not where it is. It's like you're not exactly certain or focused on what you need you want to do because you're kind of confused, yet you do want to move forward. And of course, he just mentions the usual fact of what happened with his family. So now the next day happens and the chore is to get a flower at a paradise. And apparently he still has some tricks off his sleeve. Master Roshi, instead of first prize, the second prize he came up with is a technique to boost your skill, boost your stats in one instant, which is very cool. So now they're racing to find stuff. Of course, he had a little conversation in between that where Master Roshi didn't change, Goku didn't change, but people's strengths sure changed, and of course, Goku didn't hear that part. Alright, I wish I could end this five-episode review or thoughts and stuff with a nice little ending, but no, it continues on. We're left on a cliffhanger. So they make it to the island, and then we find Fortune Teller Baba, which technically Goku said Fortune Smeller. <laughs> Good one. So... They enter into the woods even more or into the forest and then they get into something weird. It's like, yeah, Krillin somehow walked into a pond or a little puddle and that triggered some things to happen. And then all of a sudden there are some manifestations of the people they have defeated. Holy crap. So it looks like that's going to be what is going to go on down is that. Well, Krillin needs to get up again. Krillin fell to his butt because, holy frick, there's lots of people that are way overpowered. I mean, there's some that are way overpowered because Krillin, he never really rose in power anymore. It was just Goku and Vegeta and Piccolo. Well, Piccolo to a point, though. It is kind of messed up where it's like, oh, frick. So we're going to see what happens next time. Well, I'm going to see what happens next time. I'll tell you guys what happened next time. But for right now, man, it's very, very interesting how this goes down. And hopefully Krillin finds what he wants. Thank you for watching, folks, and stay tuned for next time.